in the sharing place. Children are brought to the sharing place because a loved one has died. You must always use the present perfect tense and passive voice. A loved one has died, not a loved one is dead. And never this killed a loved one or a loved one was killed by that or even a loved one died because of the other thing. The actual circumstances of the death are inconsequential. They have nothing to do with why the children are brought. Note the passive voice to the sharing place, nor when they will leave the sharing place. Children are brought to the sharing place because a loved one has died. And despite being young, they may very well still suffer rejection if they fail to process their grief. And just about the only thing we can do for our children now is help them avoid rejection. One, denial. There are three rules at the children's sharing place. The first is that a child may leave at any time, provided they attest they are ready to leave on two separate occasions. The boy with the long hair that hangs over his eyes does not speak for his first two sessions in group. On the third session, the first thing he says is that he is ready to leave. His father isn't dead, he insists. Augie, you say, your father has died. Augie does not speak again for the remainder of the session. The next day, he repeats that he is ready to leave. You say nothing, because that is the therapeutic protocol. This protocol demands impartiality and discipline. A child who has self-selected to leave will not progress further if forced to stay in the sharing place. Worse yet, a non-progressing child could derail others' progress. You remain silent, but the other children attempt to talk sense into him. They bargain. This is appropriate. They tell Augie he can't go because he just got there, because he hasn't resolved any of his issues, because he hasn't said it yet, hasn't even started to say it. They say if he's going to go into the waiting room now, he's definitely going to get rejected. They say he can go but doesn't have to. He can still just go back to the dorms and then have dinner and then go to bed and then get up and then go to class and then return to their next session. He doesn't have to leave, even if he said he wants to leave. 57 minutes pass this way. Our time is almost up for today, you say. Augie stands without a word and opens the waiting room door. Beyond the waiting room door, is a small waiting room, just a pair of upholstered yellow chairs and a side table with a fan of three magazines. The top magazine is Ranger Rick. You have never been in the waiting room, and so you do not know what the other two magazines may be. There is also a potted plant. There must be a draft, because the potted plant nods rhythmically. Like that quiet old lady knitting in the rocking chair in Goodnight Moon. And of course, there is the other door, the exit. The word exit glows above it in red. It probably isn't even three long strides from the waiting room door to the exit. Augie steps through the waiting room door and gingerly shuts it behind him. The door latch clicks. Then there is a faint sigh of the exit door, followed by a big and sudden sound, like an alligator roaring and rolling in a swamp, and then silence. Our time is up for today, you begin to say, but just after you say time, Augie's scream interrupts you. It is a truly agonized scream, loud and long and ragged. It doesn't...